fruits of their time and their talents and their treasure as they give to their tithes and their offerings. Lord Jesus, in their time, Lord Jesus, in their energies, Lord, in all that they do, I pray God be with them. Overshadow them. I pray all those that are going to come together as they plan, Lord Jesus, for our remembrance day. As we remember, Lord, those this month that have paid the ultimate price, I pray God give wisdom. And Lord God, let there be a true, uh, Lord, reverence, Lord, for those who have made the ultimate price, the ultimate sacrifice, especially in this area, Lord Jesus, where we have so much training that goes on. I pray protect all of our soldiers. I pray protect all of our, our, our firemen and, and our CMP, Lord. Lord, those at the hospitals, Lord, all those that are first responders, all those that deal with the challenges of our lives. We pray today that you would overshadow them and keep them. We pray, Lord, for our spiritual leaders. In our case, Lord, we pray for David Bernard today. We pray for Brother Johns and Brother Gleason, Lord. We pray for Brent Carter, Lord. We pray for those who serve, Lord Jesus, and work alongside them, Lord, that you would keep them and protect them. We pray your guidance and wisdom in all of these areas, Lord. We don't want to walk in our own in our own strength. We want their leadership. Oh, we pray. Could you be joined together right now and pray for the fivefold ministry that we talked about last just a week or so ago. Lord, I pray that now, Lord, for the apostles that are loose through our world, especially our missionaries. God, we pray for the prophets among us. They want the Lord, we need their guidance. We need their direction and courage. We invite them to do the work that they need to do. We pray, Lord, for our evangelists that are gathering, Lord, and and pulling in, oh God. Raise them up, oh God, and anoint them mightily by your Spirit all over the world and all of us that are called to do the work of an evangelist. That we may not have the role, but we have the calling to reach and to seek and save the lost. I pray for those that are, that are called, Lord Jesus, to guard the sheep. And every parent in this room is called to guard their children, their great grandchildren, their, whoever in their family, Lord, all of us as spiritual leaders and Levites are called to guard our neighbors, to stand as kings and priests. God, I pray you would anoint us, Lord, as we stand with those who have the role of pastor. And Lord, all across our province, Lord, we pray for our pastors and leaders. Lord God, in the Atlantic District, Lord, all of them in BEI. Newfoundland, Lord, strengthen the one that's discouraged. Strengthen the one whose hands hang down because there's no one there to lift them up. Thank you for the men and women of this assembly. And I'm so honored to serve with. Thank you. I pray a blessing upon every leader that stood here just a week ago, Lord. I pray thank you for the anointing you placed upon their lives. God, you would open up doors and direct them, Lord, we pray. We release them into ministry according to your will. pray for our local assembly. We pray, Lord, for our pastor. Would you name names right now? Would you call out? Would you pray and support my wife and myself and our family? You all know Mike, Zach, and Brooke, and Jordan, and others that are connected to us, my parents. Would you pray for the pastor? And would you pray for our board members and our small group leaders? Would you pray that God would anoint our discipleship efforts, those that we're reaching for? Let's pray for our campus ministry and God, other things at NCC. Can we bind together right now, Heavenly Father? We pray for the members of our assembly, every Sunday school teacher. Lord, everyone that works, Lord Jesus, whether they do labor, Lord Jesus, in cleaning the house. And Lord, thank you for Conrad being here last day and going and doing all that work, Lord. I thank you for all those like him who take care of us, Lord, who serve us. Let us not just honor them on one day of the month, but Lord, let us remember. Lord Jesus, the shepherd's appreciation. Lord, you shepherd those who are in this building. And Lord, we want to be like you. Whatever you called us to do, Lord, we want to do it with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind and strength. We want to, we want to serve and do it as unto the Lord. I pray, bless, Lord Jesus, every small group leader. I pray that your doors, I pray, bless, Lord Jesus, I pray, and keep the growth family, Lord. Bless my wife, Laura, and myself, Lord, and others that work with them, Jesus, that you're going to raise up as we move forward, God. I believe there's so many that are ready, Lord Jesus, ready to break forth in their own ministries, and Lord, their own groups. I pray, be with them, we pray today. We thank you. Can we just thank the Lord for hearing us today? Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and your loving kindness. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, David, good to see you. Amen. How are we going?
glad that we have a board missions director. He does a great job. Amen. He's looking all spiffy today. Should I say spiffy? He said spiffy. Praise the Lord, everyone. What a day that will be. I sang that in the swimming pool the other day. <laughs> the instructor, she looked at me and she said, what did you say? I said, what a day that will be. I got a, a different report this week, a confusing report. Do you have the other one? You don't have it? Okay, well then we'll give that one next week. We got the, the double pictures come up there. The Casadas. Joshua and his wife are in Israel, Palestine. And when I was thinking about them, we don't hear an awful lot from some of these missionaries. Some let us uh, get a, a quarterly report. And generally, generally, um, we hear from most of them. Uh, but in reference to Brother Cassidy, we haven't heard. So I asked uh, a lady last week if she could maybe get something for me. And she said, had just retired and their son who we know he and his wife God made a way. 35 people were baptized that night. Throughout the recent conference and camps, there have been 155 filled with the Holy Ghost. <coughs> Mission trips. God has been pouring out His Spirit throughout the islands of the Solomons. This is uh, an area that the whole area that they're looking after. Forty were baptized in Jesus' name and 14 were filled with the Holy Ghost. What a wonderful report. And I always like to acknowledge or talk about a missionary that we've had right in this building. Right there in that center area there, probably now 10, 12, 12 years ago. At that time, they had one child. Now they have three. And they're in Greece. They've taken that beautiful work that was looked after for so long. They've taken that over. But I want to read you something right here that's interesting. still with the Holy Ghost 
and we received the Bible study, and we were so, so glad to be given back on his own, just like these little children here. Brother Pollard, I commend you to that family. And this is another family that's over there in Greece. No matter where the family is, the children, no matter where they are, if they're on the Gaza, I walk to Gaza. I walked in Rapa. I was there up and down the streets and all the children want something for nothing. But when we prayed today, Pastor mentioned children several times. I look at the destruction there now. I was in Lebanon too. So we look at the millions and the millions and the millions. And here we have a church of 230,000. One prayer, one dollar, one prayer, one dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever you give. We, we honor 17 missionaries in this church. I've spoke to many pastors, two or three, if that's many. And for a congregation this size and a church this size we do commendable but we're not blowing the roof off and we can if we pray a bit more and give a bit more it'd be surprising what we can do so we're going to pray right now Brother and Sister Caseda, Joshua, he went to Israel. I don't know what denomination he is. I don't know what he even, I know what he, he preaches. I don't know much about him. We just got this communicated one time three, four years ago that this man needs support. So we started to support him. Never seen him. Never seen him. But as I look on everybody's face right now, here's Joshua and his wife in Israel. Oh, Lord. Help them, Lord. What a mammoth, mammoth job. What a mammoth job that a missionary has. But every missionary is different. These people are a little bit different. They're sitting in amongst the children of God. In Jesus' name, Lord. Strengthen them. Give them strength. Wipe away all fear. Wipe away all the fear, Lord. Have them rejoice at seeing these people being baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. And brother and sister Marino and their family, bless them, Lord, and their children. They're growing up in an area, going to a, a Christian school and trying to learn whatever they're learning in their regular school days. 
but they have this problem with all the rest of the children around them not speaking the same language they do. Keep your hand upon them, Lord. Oh, the Marinos, they need a special hand. Jesus. We just bless the Lord right now. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just turn our hearts toward the Lord right now. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus, in this house of prayer. We pray for all the nations of the world. Yes, hallelujah. We pray, God, that your will would be done in every situation. Would you stand with me right now? Let's let's reach out beyond the ordinary. Amen. Thank you for this good report. But we want to reach out right now, continue the prayers that were begun just a moment ago. Would you pray for the world? Would you pray for our children? Would you pray for the cities that are lost, that have no representation of the gospel? Hallelujah. We pray for thousands of cities, thousands of cities that have no Lord oneness message being preached. I pray, God, raise up laborers in the harvest field. Protect those that are already in the harvest. God, help us to take the responsibility upon ourselves, we pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name of, of Jesus. 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 We're going to sing here in just a moment. Would you shake a hand or two before we get into some worship? Let someone know you're glad they're here. Amen. Move around a little bit. Let them know you're glad they're in the house of the Lord. Sing to the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. With your spirit, clap with your hands. God is greatly to be praised. Worthy, worthy. He is worthy to be praised.
word for God today, but he is awesome. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you filled with awe when you think of him today, what he's done for us? Let's sing it. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Oh, my God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened forever. to live inside of me oh is anyone thankful for that does it still blow your mind is it still awesome to you that his spirit dwells inside of us leading us and guiding us and comforting us what an awesome God what an awesome God for the last two weeks this God has just been speaking this scripture into my spirit it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. I looked that up. I was studying it the other day because I really want to get it, what God is speaking in my spirit. And really what those first two words, might and power, really are talking about, everything that we can do in our flesh, which is so natural for us, right? Like, we just want to get it done, right? We, we want, and, we, and they're good things. They're good things. We want souls to be saved. We want people to be healed. 
but he's been telling me over and over, you just got to seek me. You got to seek me till you find me. You got to seek me until you're filled with my spirit. It's going to be by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And I just, I can feel the hunger among you. And it's just such a beautiful, beautiful thing for me. I can feel people in this church just being so hungry for the Lord. And I just want to sing this next song just as a church body today. And it's just an invitation, God, just come. Come by your Holy Spirit. And we are not going to tell you, God, how to do it. We're not going to tell you how to move by your Spirit. However you want to do it. Are you with us, church? Whatever you want to do, however you want to move, God, will you say yes to him today? It doesn't matter what it looks like. Oh, I feel his presence right now. Doesn't matter what it sounds like. I don't care, God. We just want you. We just want you. Hallelujah. There's nothing more precious, Lord, than your Holy Spirit. Nothing. There is nothing like your Holy Spirit. So would you sing it together? Hallelujah, Jesus. There's nothing worth more could ever come close. Nothing can compare your our living hope. Oh, there's nothing like you, Lord. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of us. My heart becomes free and my shame is undone. This is what it's like. It is presence. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are. to be 
your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness
Let's pray for spiritual blessings, for blessings of the mind and heart. Let's pray for, for physical blessings. Heavenly Father, we pray blessings over one another right now. As the body, Lord, we want, you, we want to receive from you and let it flow through us. God, we want to receive from you, Lord, for your anointing and your flow. And we want it to flow through us to the minister to the need. Lord, fill our spirits, Lord, and fill the spirits of everybody in this room. Lord, God, with mercy, with grace, Lord, with your blood covered. Lord, bring healing to minds and hearts, Lord, right now. We cast every care on you, and we look to you, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before you, Lord, why did you endure the cross and despise the shame? Because you saw people in this room who would seek your face, people that would have a need that you could meet. Oh, God, and beyond that, Lord, I pray for the natural, physical need. I, Lord, I thank you for those that have given of their tithes and offerings. But, Lord, more importantly, I thank you for those that have given of their time. And, Lord Jesus, the treasures of their heart. Lord, I pray a blessing upon my brother and sister, especially those today as we remember our four missionaries. Thank you for all those that give, Lord, and sometimes out of their need, Lord. Lord God, to, to, Lord, to bless the world, to reach the world. Lord God, with the gospel of Jesus Christ, thank you for this privilege. Lord, I pray, bless, press down, shaken together, and running over. People will give back into your, the hearts and minds of your people. Lord, into their physical needs, their emotional needs, their mental needs, their spiritual needs. Bless me. Now, can we just thank you for all of his benefits, all of his benefits and blessings. Lord, thank you, Jesus. I know some of you are weary. If you feel weary and you need to sit down, please do so. But I feel like there's some people here that still need something from God. Would you just continue to reach? And if you're not able, if you're able to and you see someone that's reaching out, would you just maybe put your hand on them and reach, stretch your hand toward them? Would you pray right now? Hallelujah. God is here to meet real needs. The way God did not come here. He came to bring us good news for difficult times. Hallelujah. This gospel was designed for challenges, for difficulties, for heartbreak. For brokenness, he was designed. He designed this gospel to make us whole, to bring us hope. Amen. To bring Amen. Us hope. Hallelujah. Thank make you, us Jesus. whole, God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Come on, just reach a little bit farther. Come on, church. Hallelujah. And please, I pray, don't anybody be impatient right now. I understand there's people that are hurting or in need right now, or praying for family or friends or neighbors or situations in life. Would you extend your hands toward them? Pray with them right now. We pray, Lord, for those that are still standing. Lord God, especially those that are still standing. Those that have their hands raised. Those that are reaching out. In surrender, Lord, I surrender my need to you. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my family, my finances. Lord, I surrender, Lord Jesus, all the things of my life to you. I belong to you. Come on, would you pray for those that will hear this message at some future time? Lord, I pray for those at home that Lord, are hurting, maybe whatever their need may be, that you would encourage them today and strengthen them today and bless them. We pray for those in our city and those in our families, Lord, that need your touch. Oh, do you feel the assurance? I feel peace in my heart. not be uh, on the list of songs, but I just feel to sing it. 
I want you to just feel after the Lord, please. If you're able to, open, close your eyes and just feel after the Spirit. I don't know what you're feeling in your spirit, but would you reach after the Lord and let Him fill you with joy and peace and His love? Amen. I feel
I'm hungry for the Word. I know I'm preaching it, but I'm hungry. I am so hungry for the Word of the Lord. Colossians chapter 3, 14. But of all these things, could you say these next three words with me? Put on love. Say it again. Put on love, which is the bond of perfection. I wanted to title this Triple A Living, but uh, God had everything else. God is going to talk to us today about Triple A Loving. A, A, A. Amen. It's another way of saying yes, yes, yes. pray with me one more time and ask God to speak and anoint me. Would you pray that God would anoint me? Would you give me permission to speak into your life as your pastor? <laughs> I can't do anything, Lord, without you. We've already heard a clear word here today. It's not going to be by mind nor by power. It's not going to be by the will of anybody in this room. It's going to be by your spirit. Would you do what you do? Come on, can we agree? I would. I wish that every, all of us, 100% would agree. God, would you do whatever you want to do in me and through me? I'm tired of being afraid. I'm tired of being weary. I'm tired of being weak. I want to be powerful. I want to be an overcomer. I want to be valiant. I want to be strong. Amen. Turn your neighbor and give someone a high five, a holy kiss if you want to go that far, whatever you feel to do today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Holy match morning and a holy kiss. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, before I go any farther, I, I, I know we want to get in the message, but on a personal note, thank my wife and I want to thank you for your incredible generosity uh, last week, both in honoring us with your time, your talents, your treasure. And uh, thank you for allowing us to be your pastor uh, for the last nine years. And uh, in case you didn't know what you got us, uh, you got us a getaway package, and so uh, hopefully uh, next spring we'll go find a beautiful, uh, I believe it's a bay, and there's a place there that you guys have paid for us to go, and so I'm really looking forward to that. You know, some people don't understand, but that's one of the ways to bless yourself, to send the pastor away where he can get a hold of God and <laughs> renew his marriage and and uh, and uh, be strengthened. You would not believe what happens, how many messages I get by the tw second or third day. Um, of rest. Um, God just begins to flood my mind. And so thank you for that, and thank you for the flowers that you got my wife and the many ways that you've shown care. Amen. I do apologize. I felt like I kind of made an abrupt di uh, dismissal last week. <laughs> I was like, hey, it's time to go. <laughs> Let's go honor our world. Amen. And uh, so part of living, of course, and thank you for your giving, is uh, being loved and loving others. And but true, to truly live is to love, and I, I just want to talk to you about that today. But as I look to the future, I don't know what you're seeing, but I see that there are personal challenges. I see that there's challenges in families, relational difficulties. If not in your life right now, then in the future. I'm pretty sure there's uncertain times. Can I get an amen on that one? We live in perilous times. And... Uh, so there's a question that the scripture talks about going all the back, way back to the time of Ezekiel. How should we then live? How can we live in these times? How do we, how do we gain life in these times? I'm going to take you to Ezekiel in my introduction here. In Ezekiel chapter 33, 10 through 11, it says, uh, Therefore you, O son of man, this is, this is uh, God speaking to Ezekiel. Uh, Therefore you, O son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus you say, and he's, of course he's now speaking, this is what the people are saying. If, your trans, if our transgressions and our sins lie upon us and we pine away in them, how can we then live? If our sickness and our diseases and our wayward thoughts and our, our alternate lifestyles live in, in our, upon us as a culture, how can we live? How can God withhold judgment is what we're hearing here. And it, God goes on to say, Say to the people that ask, How can we live or how should we live? As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Interesting. Think about that for a minute. He doesn't take pleasure in destroying people because of their wickedness. He, but He takes pleasure in the wicked that turn from His way and live. 
turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die, O house of Israel? Now, I know we just turned back our clocks, but there's some other things that are turning in our culture. And I believe it's time for the people of Canada and the people of North America and the people of this world to turn back to God. Amen. I hope we don't have to turn back to God in this place, but we need to turn whatever we need to turn toward Jesus. However we need to turn, we need to turn. And I, Because why should we die? Why should we die in our sin when we can turn back toward God, when we can remember his benefits and his blessings, remember that he is faithful? I believe we're in a time of assessment and reassessment. I believe, we're, I believe we only have one or two months left in the year. Is that true? This is the first Sunday of November. How are your, if you can even remember them, your New Year's resolutions doing? How are your goals for the year? You've only got a sixth of the year left. You better get on it. I'm just being honest with you. We have got to think about this. I mean, we're, we're in the middle of the church here, but we're not in the middle of this year as far as the, the date goes. And we need to be aware of this time. So how are we going to overcome? You say, well, I'm a little discouraged. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about what I'm not haven't gotten done this year. I don't want to think about the fact that that there may be some things that I wanted to do I haven't gotten done. That's not the point. The point is, what are you going to do from here forward? I, I remember where you came from, but you need to move forward. And we have to, God has called us to be overcomers. Can I get an amen? amen? God has called us to be more than conquerors. Can I get an amen? amen. God has called us to mature. You might not want to amen that one. You might want to say, oh, me. <laughs> Amen. We need to move from our focus on ourselves. I hear the Spirit talking to us strongly about this. Uh, from a focus on ourselves to a focus on God and others. Amen. We need to look beyond ourselves in this last generation. And then maybe in previous times we could get away with just coming to church. But it's not time for that anymore. It's time to be the church everywhere we go. It's time to walk it, to talk it, and to fly like it. Amen. It's time to walk the way that God wants us to walk. It's time to run the way he wants us to run. It's time to fly the way he wants us to fly. Amen. Does anybody believe that, by the way? Amen. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. We talked a little bit about it last night. and Thank you for that passion translation and leadership. That was great, Justin. I, I warned them last night. I touched on this briefly uh, this morning. It says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'm going to mention three things to you, and this will be my three main points. These are the triple A's. Number one, say adapt. Adapt. Number two, say align. It's getting weaker. It should get stronger, not weaker. And then thirdly, advance. And there you go. I mean, adapt, align, advance. If you want to live a truly great life, you have to adapt, you have to align, and you have to advance. And depending on where you want to end up, you will align yourself with those things. You'll adapt and move into that place that changed what you need to do in order to accomplish the mission. If you just want a, a beautiful home and a, a wonderful bank account and a great retirement, that's what you'll work for. But if you have your height set a little higher to having wonderful relationships and having, having a life that makes a difference in the lives of other people, or perhaps you want to set your sights even higher than that to being and setting eternal things in place, uh, things like eternal life, things like an eternal blessing from the Lord, uh, things that will forever be with you throughout eternity. I mean, we need to align ourselves with what really matters to us. How many of you believe that we can accomplish great things? Jesus said, as long as they're in unity, um, God says, as long as they're in unity, hey, they're going to build that Tower of Babel. Nothing can be restrained from them. And so he, he mixed up our languages and sent us to different places of the globe. And that's what he did. Why? Because when we're unified and we have a, a clear purpose and a clear vision and we pursue it, something happens that accomplishes the, the things that we can't even dream of in our own ability. Uh, God begins to do things through us that we can't even comprehend by our own strength. And so if you allow me to this, this morning, let me just share these three thoughts with you, and then I'll do a little application for it. Amen. Number one, adapt means to change or adjust. It means that we're not to be conformed, pressed in, and, and made into, not just this, we're not a bunch of people that are supposed to be just shaped into the same mold over and over again. 
like some press that just presses us until we're all the same. You know, our world says that they want us to be unique, but not really. They don't. Uh, we have to be very careful of this. God is not interested in you being conformed by the world. He's interested in you being transformed. Every tree out there is unique. You can just look out the windows. Everyone is unique. They go in different ways. I was looking at someone else in prayer this morning. I'm like, why did that branch go off that way? That don't make no sense to me. I don't know why. Do you? I, I bet you don't either. It's just the way that it was designed. It's Each one is unique. Each one is different. And so we don't want to be conformed to this world. We want to be transformed. How does that happen? By the renewing of our mind. This is the battleground, folks. And if you can't adjust mentally, I'm just telling you. You know how where the battle is won? You were talking about this, the helmet of salvation a couple weeks ago. The helmet of salvation protects our mind. Why? Because we need to be able to adapt. The battle is won here, right here. You can be weak, but if you can think better and think stronger, know what I'm, make a trap for the enemy or, or call upon somebody more powerful. You may not be strong yourself, but when you can call upon God and you can call upon the power of heaven itself and call upon the angels, I'm just saying, sometimes we, we think wrong. We think, well, I can't do it. You're right. Get over yourself already. It's not by might nor by power, as my wife was saying. It's by the Spirit. We need the mental agility to realize it's not upon me. It's not about me. It's about what He can do. This is how anyone who wants to be victorious, did you hear me? Anyone who wants to be victorious, anyone who wants to be an overcomer, anyone who wants to be more than a conqueror can have the mind of Christ. You can be trained. The mind can be trained to think in the ways of the spirit rather than the ways of the man. I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter your upbringing. It doesn't matter what kind of situation you're in. You need to realize it's the mind of Christ. It's being transformed by the renewing of your mind that will allow you to be adaptable. That when tough times come and things hit you and things come this way and that way and they kind of hit you sideways, you'll be able to adjust and adapt, amen, and move and still stay in the fight. How many of you want to still be in the fight? How many, how many want to still be fighting the good fight of faith when he returns? How many of you want to still be working in the field and laboring the labor of love in the world? Amen. God is calling on us to be adaptable. I'm just telling you, it doesn't the same, you can't use the same thing with every people. We'll talk more about that in a moment. We've got to be adaptable. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, be adaptable. adaptable. Able to be adapted. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Amen. Paul said, I become all things to all men. That sounds like adaptation, yeah. right? Does that sound adaptable? It sounds adaptable to me. The th second thing I mentioned is alignment or align. That means focusing on what's right and then lining up with it, right? You see what's right, you get in line, and then you line up with it. And this is what it talks about here. Now, what's this? It says prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hi, where's the proof? The proof is in the alignment. That you're acting like Jesus would act. Remember the old time saying, what would Jesus do? Right? We do what's good. That's how we get in alignment. And as we do it, we line up with it. And we live pleasing to God. We live an acceptable life. We adjust and start realizing it's not what I think is right, it's what he thinks is right. It's not what, what, what he wants, what I want to do, it's what he wants me to do. I want to be in alignment. I want to prove what is good. The good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Turn to your neighbor and say, be in alignment. Get lined up. Amen. Toe the line. Come on, whatever you need to do to straighten them out. Come on, somebody needs to straighten somebody out here. Amen. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but we need to line up with something outside of ourselves. What is that? God's will. Why do you think it mentions God's will be done in the Lord's Prayer? What? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, right? You think that's an accident? No, that's part of how Jesus taught us to pray. It's supposed to be a once in a while thing, right? No. Every moment of every day, praying without ceasing, your kingdom come, your will be done. I want to be in alignment with you all hours of the day. Now, if your car gets out of alignment, does anybody know what happens? It's a lot of wear and tear. You don't know what's going to happen when you hit the brakes. Something will start moving around on the back. 
I'm telling you, you do, it's, the more dangerous it becomes, the more important your alignment is. I'm here to tell you, the world is getting dangerous. We're going through dangerous times. You had better stay in alignment with God. You better make sure your spirit is in alignment. Your mind, your thinking is in alignment. Your desires of your heart are in alignment with the will of God. I want everything about my life, my time, my talents, my treasure, how I spend my money, how I spend my time, how I work, how I live, everything I do, I want to be in alignment with God's will. Can I get an amen in the house today? Does anybody have a desire to be in alignment with God? Hallelujah. The image just came to my mind sometimes how God speaks to me. I'm not saying this is what God just said, but have you ever nailed a nail? You ever put a nail into a board? And you got the hammer there, you got the nail there. Man, you do not want to be out of alignment with the head of the nail when that hammer comes down. I don't know about, I've done it a few times. It didn't go too well. Amen. Woo. Yeah, verily, verily, I said to thee, <laughs> that is painful. <laughs> right? You want it to be in alignment. And have you ever hit it and it's not quite right? You know? And you go to hit the nail and you don't hit it quite flat on. And all of a sudden it bends the nail. And now you're trying to straighten it out. And now it's all crooked. And you're still trying to drive it in because you only got one nail left. <laughs> hey, let, folks, we only have one life to live. Either we're going to get this thing right or we're not. Right. I'm just being honest. And I'm telling you, when the hammer comes down, and God's going to bring the hammer, yes, he is. You want to be in alignment. You want to be straight. You want to be in the right place. You want to be positioned properly. And I'm here to tell you, our life, is our time and our talents and energy are like nails in our own hand. We've got to position that just right. Because I'm telling you, we've got to be where the hammer's going to come. We've got to be where God can straighten us out. I don't know about you. You say, well, I don't want that. Well, I'm sorry. That's the way God works sometimes. I'm not saying he always brings the hammer. But I tell you what, I want him as the carpenter of my life. I want him to be, Lord, to, I want to be adaptable and him to move me. Well, I don't think that's what I should do. Well, no, no, no. I want to adapt. I want to move. I want to change. I want to be transformed. I want to get in the proper place so that when the, time, when the time comes, he puts me where I need to be, where I can connect something, where I can bring something together. This church is probably not put together with screws. It's probably put together with nails. The old timers, they didn't use a lot of screws because they didn't have drills, right? That would have been a lot of work. They used nails. And I believe in some ways God has put the church together with nails. We need to nail this thing. We need to get it right. We need to be in alignment with God. We need to be adaptable so that God can move us where we need to be. Because otherwise we're not going to advance the vision of reaching the whole world with the whole gospel. We're not going to be going in the right direction. We must act and follow Jesus. We need to move with him. How many of you believe that we want to advance the vision of Jesus Christ? It's wonderful that we're adaptable, and it's wonderful that we're in alignment. But if we just sit around going, wow, what a beautiful building. This building doesn't do a whole lot for the kingdom of God unless there's something moving in this place, unless the Spirit of God is moving, unless there's prayers and ministry being accomplished in the body of Christ. Can I get an amen? The full proof of maturity and ministry is in whether or not you move whether or not you act. It's what we do. James wrote it this way in James chapter 1, verse 22 through 25. He says, But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. I've seen people come to church. This is the greatest fear of every pastor, every teacher, is that we would speak the, re, the word of the revealed word of God. People would see themselves and not be changed. That's why we have an altar service where you serve the Lord, where you come and offer yourself to God and say, God, change me. Lord, adapt me. I want to be adaptable. I want to be in alignment. I want to go where you want me to go. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, say continues in it, and it's not a forgetful hearer. Say forgetful hearer. Mm, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. I want to be blessed in what I do. I want everything and everywhere, whatever my hand finds to do, I want to do it as unto the Lord, and I want to see the blessing that falls on it because I'm doing his will.
The Bible te teaches this thing. If you, if you love the Lord and you're trying to fulfill His purpose, everything works together for good. To those that love God and are called according to His purpose. When you're trying to fill His purpose in your life and you're moving forward and you're advancing and you're willing to adjust, you're willing to be in alignment with God, then when you advance, God will bless the way you go. And I get an amen in the house. How many of you believe that victory's ahead for the church? How many of you believe that victory's ahead for the church? No, you're not getting it. How many of you believe that victory's ahead for you? You are the church. I have victory ahead because I'm part of the body of Christ. There's victory ahead because I'm willing to adapt. I'm willing to align, and I'm willing to advance at the sound of the name of Jesus and his call and his purpose. I will carry this gospel to the whole world. Hallelujah. Would you clap your hands and make a joyful noise? Hallelujah. Amen. We're not supposed to just look into the law of liberty. Come on. We're to continue in it. We're to walk in it. We're to talk in it. We're to effort. We're supposed to go forward in it. Amen. We're not to be forgetful. We'll talk more about that next week. But we're supposed to be a doer of the work. Hallelujah. This is the path of blessing. This is the way to living an abundant life. This is the way to be the church in motion. Get to love my Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. I'm going to read the New Living Translation because I like how it puts this phrase. And from the time of John the Baptist began preaching until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing. Wow. And violent people are attacking it. Now, I used to read that and understand. What in the world is it saying? Violent, violent, taken by force and all that stuff. But when you start understanding what the, what the original Greek was talking about, it means we need to forcefully advance. We're not going to advance by accident, folks. Do you think, Dan, that you can reach the lost without trying? It's just going to happen. They're just going to come by your house, drop in, and say, I want to be baptized. No. Do you think the people at, at Tim's, where you guys head out, they're just going to, they're just going to invite themselves to your church. Maybe, but normally not. You know, one of the there's several people in here, you're really good at inviting people to the church. But let's not forget, we are the church too. And when we have, invite them, we invite them to sit with us, and we make friendships with people. That is part of advancing the kingdom. That's going and making disciples. You don't make a disciple until you first make a friend, just so you know. This is really practical, isn't it? That means we may have to adapt some things. You may have to become all things to all people, like Paul said. Right? You may have to adjust your approach. When the wind's sideways, I'm pretty sure the guy flying the plane doesn't fly the same. I'm pretty sure the rudders are set a little different. And the angling, I can't remember how to say that. Or Alarians or something, I don't know how to say it. Anyway, they got the flaps. I'll just say flaps. How about that? <laughs> the flaps and the rudder and all that stuff are adjusted a little differently. If the wind's blowing 30, 40 knots this way and you coming down, you, you're not going to fly the same as if it's dead air. We need to adjust and adapt to the wind in our world. We need to be able to talk to them about things they're interested in. Well, I'm too, I'm too high and holy to talk about this or that. Uh, I can't talk about that. No, no, no. You need to be able to talk about normal things. You need to talk about what's at the mall. You need to be able to talk about what's in the news. You need to be talking about some of these things so you can connect with people. We're not in heaven yet, folks. We need to be able to connect to people. Yes. So you may have to broaden your interests. You might need to find a hobby to reach somebody. Brother Tracy, what? What are you interested in? If you're interested in knitting, find people that knit. I don't care. But find a way to connect to somebody. You love making doilies? Create a club. I'm not even, I know you're laughing at me, but I'm being serious. Well, I don't know how to reach the lost. How do you, do you know how to make a friend? If they're lost and they become your friend, isn't that reaching the lost? Oh, this is too complicated for me, Brother Tracy. I, uh, I need you to renew my mind. I am trying to. Right? Jesus went places nobody else would go. He was known as a friend of, are you sure? I thought he was the friend of the saints. 
No, he said the friend of sinners. Are you known as a friend of sinners? Okay, I'm going to lighten up a little bit. A bit. <clears throat> okay, that was for free. That was for free. It'll just cost you a lot, but it's for free. <laughs> Amen. The application. Let's get into it here a little bit today. I'm going to wrap this up. I've actually only been preaching about 20 minutes. That's crazy. We had a little bit longer pre-service. Amen. Living equals loving. Say it with me. Living equals loving. Look at your neighbor. Look him in the eye and say, living equals loving. David, living equals loving. That's right. You can't say you're really living without loving. If you don't have someone to love and someone to love you back, but especially if you don't have someone to love, you're going to struggle with living. Life's going to be really tough. To truly live, one must love well. Now, you know this is part of my ministry as your pastor, and you know it's going to come up frequently. Why? Why would it come up frequently? Well, a certain lawyer came to Jesus one day, and you can read this in Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 28. And let me just read through it. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him. He was trying to see if Jesus was a real deal, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? What a great question. Probably one we don't think about enough. Where am I going to spend eternity? And how do I live forever? And where am I going to live forever? And Jesus, it says, he said to him, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So Jesus asked a question and returned to a question. And so the young man, the certain lawyer, uh, answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And, and then he, speaking of Jesus, said to him, you have answered rightly, do this and you will live. I know this is very simple. But I'm not asking you if you know it. I'm asking you if you're living it. Who did you love this week? Who did you love better this week than you did last week? If you can't be specific, then you probably didn't because it wasn't intentional. Right? Alignment is intent. Adaptation is making adjustments so that you can love someone better. Would you agree with that? Adapting my life, changing the way I live so that it's more conducive, as we said several weeks ago, the hospitality, the community, and unity. And God is coming again to talk to us today about how we are approaching life. Now, it doesn't matter whether we're talking about relationship with God or relationship with people. In fact, we'll start with there. This word agape, agape is all through the Scripture, especially the New Testament. It's talking about a mature love. This is not an infantile love. This is not a, a cooties type of love, right? This is not a, woo, that feels good, right? This is the kind of love that says, I'll lay down my life for you. This is the kind of love that says, I'll love you when you don't love me back. This is the kind of love that says, I'm willing to, to sacrifice everything that's precious to me so that you can be blessed. In 1 John 5, 2, it says this, by this we know that we, lo we love the children of God. Catch that? By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep His commandments, the first step to loving people is loving God and keeping His commandments. Why? His commandments teach us. His com we have to adapt to what He says. We have to get in alignment with what He says. And so to love God, I need to be willing to adapt. His Spirit gives me the power to change. So we no longer have an excuse. Well, I just can't. No, you can't. That's probably true. But can you do it through Christ? Or do you not believe the scripture that says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me? Or who strengthens me, depending on which translation. Right? He gives me the power to be transformed. He gives the power to think differently, to have a different heart, to have different desires. He transforms me from a naturally minded man to a spiritually minded man, from a fleshly person to a person that walks in the spirit. Hallelujah. Do you feel what I'm feeling? God is talking powerfully to us right now. John 14, verse 26. We need to be in alignment with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he teaches me all things. Listen to this. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. 
there are certain things that we need to go back and remember again. There's some things that God wants to fill us with again. There's some things that we need. We don't just need to turn back the clock. Some of us need to turn back to another page and remember the promises that we made to Jesus. The fact that when we first started off, we were in alignment with his purpose. Are we still in alignment with his will? Are we still adapting and adjusting? Hey, you say, well, I don't know. I, I'm still doing the same old, I'm doing the same things I once did. Well, let me just tell you, when things get tougher, you've got to work harder. When the wind's blowing sideways, you've got to lean into it a little bit to stay on track. I'm just telling you, the things of this world and the deceitfulness of this world and the spirit in this world, if you're not directly aware and pushing it back against the, the selfishness that's loose in our world, against the arrogance that's loose in our world, against the deceitfulness, if you're not looking for truth, if you don't buy the truth and not sell it, you will not be saved. And as your pastor, I've come today to say, you've got to start adapting some things if you're going to stay in love with Jesus. You've got to start adjusting some things. You've got to make sure you're still on course. You're still in alignment with the ultimate goal of heaven. You're not going to make it if you get blown sideways by every wind of doctrine and by everything they say in our political environment and by what they teach us in school and in the Internet and on the radio anymore. I'm here to tell you, you better be in the Word of God. You better be reading the Word of God. And saying every day, okay, am I in my life? That's not going to be enough to pray a little prayer I mean, over your food. you got to pray every day to make sure you're on goal. You're on track to being with Jesus. God, I need you to adapt. I don't know about you. I'm reading the Bible, and he's adjusting my mind. He's adjusting my path. He's directing my steps. Hallelujah. I want to be adapted and aligned with him. I want to be walking with him, advancing with him, step by step. I want to make sure I'm following Jesus every step of the way. Come on, I can't afford in the last days with perilous times to get off track. I can't afford to become rigid in my thinking. i got to do whatever it takes to reach the lost and to love Jesus. And I'm in 1 John 4, 21 says this, And this commandment we have from him, he who loves God must love his brother also. Luke 10, 29 that story we're just reading about that lawyer listen to what it said when he heard what Jesus said and, and Jesus said you got this right do it go act like that go walk in it well then he was confronted like some of you are being confronted this morning and he said mm, who is my neighbor and that's where Jesus gets into talking about the good Samaritan Right? That's what he says right here in, in Luke chapter 10, verse 21. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Who here is foolish enough to think that we can justify ourselves? Justify means to line up. Anybody that's done a Word document knows what I'm talking about. Justification. At the top of the page, a lot of times they have, they have you know, it shows one side, and the other side's kind of jagged, and it shows, then it has another one where both sides are straight, and it stretches everything out to fit a column or whatever and I don't know about you I want to be justified I want to be in alignment not according to what I think but what God thinks I don't know who's the author of your story I don't know who's writing in your word document but I'm telling you when God writes the word on my heart I want it to be justified according to his will his plan his willingness his desire I don't want I want to adapt to what he says is the boundary and the margin in my life I don't want to decide whether I need margins or not how close I can get to the world or how close I can get to, to sin and sickness and disease I tell you when God puts a margin in my life I want to watch the margin in my life I want to make sure I don't go too far to the left or too far to the right. I want to stay right in the middle of God's will. I want to be in alignment with my God. I want to walk holy and righteous in this present age. Could you just lift up your hands if you feel that way and say, Lord, here I am. I want to be in alignment with you. I want to be adaptable. I want to be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I don't want to justify myself. I don't want to justify myself. Lord, if you'd come. Amen. Amen. If we're adults and we're mature, we should be reproducing. I'm just saying that. I, I, I'm saying if we're healthy Christians, we should be reproducing ourselves. 
I'm not mean to be hard. It's not meant to be, oh, I have to. Good Lord, that's not why we had kids. It's because we had to. Woo! No, we were in love. And we wanted to bring children into our home. We wanted to make the world a better place. Does anybody feel that way? You want to teach some people the ways of the Holy Spirit. You want to teach people the ways of God. We've got to walk with God ourselves. And then we lead others to follow us. Because there's no better way to live than in love with Jesus. There's no better way to live than loving my neighbor as myself. And so I want to adapt. I want to make room for others. I want to make room for people in this church building and in my home and in my life and in my day, in my time, in my weekly schedule. I want to make room. I want to adapt. I want to adapt. I want to align. I want to follow his example. I must needs go by way of Samaria. I'm going to go down and talk to Matthew. And on my way to talking to Matthew, I'm going to talk to Zacchaeus. And we'll end up at his house for a while. And then, then we'll go down to Matthew, the Levi. Uh, he was a Levi, but he also was known as being a tax collector. A priest who became a tax collector. Can you come up here? Wow. Isn't that good? And yet God chose him. God chose Saul. Transformed him into Paul. A man who had persecuted the Christians. Talk about adapting. One encounter with Jesus can change an eternity. Yes. How many you know what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you remember? Do you remember when you turned back? When you turned away from destruction? When God turned you away from a heartache and sorrow, it's not done. I still want to be changed. I still want to be adapted. I still want to get in alignment. I'm not done yet. We were talking about this, Dan and I, before service. We're not done. we still got some growing to do. And one of the greatest signs of growth is that we have disciples. We have people that we're reaching, people that we're gra helping grow. And so we want to advance. We want to act right. We want to be an example. First Timothy 4, child right? Let no one despise your youth. Let no one despise you at all, youth or not. Be an example of the believers in your words, in your conduct or behavior, in your, right? In your love, your spirit, your faith, your purity. Amen. Would you stand with me right now? Matthew 28, 19. Go and make disciples. Colossians 3, 14. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. It's time to do first things first, church. The number one thing we must do is love God, love people as we love ourselves. God, others, self. God, others, self. As we prepare for this coming week, I wonder if anybody would like to commit to me. Lord, I want to live a triple A love. I want to live my love as a triple A. I want it to be adaptable. And Lord, whatever the needs of others are, I want to adapt to meet their need. I'm not going to require them to do what I expect of them. I'm going to adapt my will, my abilities, and my strength to meet their needs. I know there's some resistance to that, but that's the way Jesus, Jesus became one of us. He became a human being. He became sin itself. He took stripes upon his back. How can I say it's too hard to love them when Jesus paid it all? How can I follow Jesus and go forward in loving people if I don't truly follow his path? Do you hear what the Spirit's been saying to us the last several weeks? He's calling us to, to follow in His footsteps. We can't just say, I want to serve you. We've got to follow you. Jesus says, if you're going to serve me, you've got to follow me. If you're going to serve me, you've got to follow me. If you're going to serve me, you've got to follow me. It's not enough to say, I want to. I want to. Uh, no, you've got to adapt. You've got to get in alignment, and you've got to walk. Amen. We want to grow in maturity. Amen. Would you, would you reach out to the Lord right now? I mean, would you reach up your hands and surrender? Would you bow your heads? Whatever you want to do, whatever is your way, whatever you've got to do, but get to Jesus this morning, please, church. 
please, my brother and my sister, get to Jesus. Whatever you're going to adapt to, whatever you're going to do to get in alignment with Him. Lord, I'm sorry for if I don't line up in my holiness. I'm sorry if I don't line up in my lifestyle. I'm sorry if I don't line up in how I use the time and talents and treasures you've given me. God, I want to go forward in you. I want to make a difference in my world. Oh, come on, could you read? The altars are open. Would you come? Would you offer yourself? I really feel like God is asking for somebody to be a living sacrifice today. Would you join your pastor in saying, God, I want to be a living sacrifice. I want the fire to fall. And for there to be a fire, there's going to be a sacrifice. He's not going to fall without a, without a sacrifice. On earth I
There's a danger in hearing and preaching a message like this, and it's that we look at ourselves rather than look to God. Because we say, I'm not adapting enough, and I'm not aligning enough, and I'm not going enough, I'm not advancing enough. And I want you to realize it's not my might or my power, it's His Spirit. There's a blessing that's meant to be had that we read in our very first scripture, the bond of perfection. As, we're, as we grow closer to God, as we're bound more closely to Him, then the bonds that we have with others, those connections, will draw them closer to Jesus. It's not so much that we have to work it, it's that we have to love it. Amen. Would you just ask God, Lord, I want to love you. I want to fall in love with you all over again. And let people see the love I have for you. Let them see me reaching for you with a smile on my face. Lord, the answer to reaching a lost world is to love you more, is to fall in love with you with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength, is to love you, Lord. And, oh, come on, church. Can we just love on him? Is that hard? I hope that's not hard. Come on. He first loved you. He went first. Hallelujah. He went first. It's okay to be honest about our shortcomings, but let's not forget, he covers our weakness. He covers our infirmities. Yeah. <laughs> he is full of mercy Hallelujah. and grace. It's not what I can do. It's what he can do in me yeah. and through me. It's true. I may be full of holes. <laughs> 
but he can make me holy. He can make me complete. And he can flow through the brokenness in my life because there's no greater example of what God can do than your weaknesses. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. When he takes us and makes us what we cannot be on our own. about you, but I've been with Jesus. I am so hungry for more of Him. Could we bind together? We're going to, of course, not dismiss today. We're, we've stopped dismissing most days. It's not going to be our practice anymore. You're welcome to stay and talk to Him and renew your relationship with Him. Make covenants with Him and commitments with Him and maybe intercede for someone as long as you want. But for right now, for our last uh, uh, com combined prayer, let's just lift our voices together and just love on Him. Lord, I want to love you with all of my heart. I recommit, rededicate myself. Whatever I need to do to love you better, I want to love you better, Jesus. I want to adapt my love. I want to adapt my love. Lord Jesus, I want to align my love with your love. I want to love like you. And the only way to do that is to get closer to you. Lord, I want to grow and advance and act on my love. Lord, a love that's kept in secret, how is that true love? Uh, Lord, it's not real love. A love that people don't know about is not love. It's the love that people hear from our lips, Lord. That's love. We say love. We live love. We act on our love. God, we're going to leave this place today. Lord Jesus saying, I want to live the way he wants me to live. We sing that song. Amen. You're welcome to stay and pray as long as you want. We're going to sing this last song. I want to live. The way he wants me to live, I want to give until there's come on to be. Come on, sing with your life. No. Oh. 